Hi, this is Clara Saint with Gilda's Club Kansas City, and here is John Hoffar for energy healing in the cancer patient. Go ahead, John. Good morning. Yeah, I'm John Hofer. I'm the director of the Kansas City Healing Project, and we've been working with cancer patients using energy healing since 2005. And what we found over the last 15 years now is that we're able to help cancer patients move through their, uh, their treatments and chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, uh, just with more ease and less pain, anxiety. And it's just a great all around support function to help the cancer patient. And as best we found so far is we've not had any side effects that uh, people have reported to us. So what we talk about uh, this morning is going to be uh, kind of talk a little bit about what the human energy system is about and what energy healing is about. Talk about the major benefits of energy healing. Then we'll have a short video of an energy healing session at that point. While we're watching it, you can ask questions. And then at the end, uh, we're, we think we'll have time to do actually a, a, a group meditation here. Kind of hard to do some of the exercises over video. So when we talk about the human energy field, uh, one of the neat things is, it's a natural, normal, everyday part of life. We use our energy field, our energy system, either consciously or unconsciously, 100% of the time. And it shifts with every thought, emotion, and physical movement. And so the way we think of this is when you get good news, you can feel your energy field expand. You feel your body becoming lighter say you got bad news or you get upset, you'll feel your energy field uh, pulling your body in. You'll feel tension in your body. So this is um, kind of related to the way that we feel our body with uh, the way the tension either comes or goes is one of the ways that we can experience this. It's also referred to as a biofield therapy. And what we're gonna work with today is talk about energy healing as a healing modality rather than trying to prove how it works, what we know is if we do this, this is generally what's gonna happen. And there are people in other field or other areas that are trying to prove how it works and maybe specifically what's going on, but what we know is when we use these techniques, this is the result we generally get. So this would be a kind of a drawing of what an energy field would look like. Um, we'll see that there are uh, parts of the energy field that are close to the body here, and it extends out about three feet in all directions here. And we generally view it as having different layers, like this blue layer right next to the body relates to, and it is an energy template for the physical body. And we move out to about here and there's an energy template for our emotional body and our spiritual bodies, as well as our mental bodies. So it's something that's both within us and all the way around us. Here are a couple examples of what how people's energy fields change when they're doing different activities. So here might be a normal aura where it's their energy field that's a little bit around, you can perceive it a little bit here, but here might be a musician playing. And so you have large bursts of energy in their field gets a lot um, larger. You have down here, like a uh, 
a woman that's pregnant. And these are the colors generally associated with pregnancy, kind of pastel pink and light blue. So the energy field changes in a woman that, that gets pregnant. Uh, here's, you know, somebody may be talking really passionately about um, a topic that's of interest to them. So as we do different activities, our field is going to uh, change. So then this would be a picture of what an energy field could look like if there's some uh, disease process going on in the body. And this particular woman that uh, is a, she has issues around her, her uterus with uh, fibroids. And so that shifts the energy field from these night, nice light colors to dark, more stagnant colors. And also in the energy field, there are different energy centers that are called chakras or just energy centers here. So there's one that points down. There's another one right about here. And then you kind of move here, here. Uh, um, so physical, emotional, mental processes here, the heart chakra, the throat, third eye, and then there's one that points up. And so our energy centers are where we take energy into the body and we can send energy out. It's kind of how we breathe energetically, what feeds us. So this is what the a graphic of what an energy healing session would look like. And here you can see the healer has all of their energy centers uh, wide open. Their field is very bright and clear. You know, you notice really good grounding here from the first chakra. And so the, the healer will pull energy into their body, into their energy field, and then send it out their hands. And on the client here, you can see that their uh, energy field is kind of stagnant and kind of these gray muted colors. And so as the healer is pulling the energy up, sending it into the feet, it's starting to move up through the client's body, through the client's energy field in order to help clear and balance the stagnant, stagnantness out. And after the energy session, the, the client's field, you notice, is a lot more brighter. The energy centers or chakras have a, a purer, clearer color to them. Generally, clients will report that they feel lighter, uh, less anxious, and less pain after a session. So, <clears throat> The, uh, the, the general benefits of the uh, patients are reporting back to us is uh, less pain, less anxiety, less fatigue. And those are ones that we ask the clients to kind of give us on a one to 10 scale, how they were before the session, how they were after the session. And as we took some videos from some of the clients and we asked them, well, you know, yeah, you said less pain, anxiety, fatigue, but tell us what you would want to tell us about the sessions. And what they go to is they have more peace. They feel like they're in a much safer place. And so it's some of these intangible benefits are actually um, a lot more important to them. When we started working at uh, Menorah Medical Center, I believe 2009, we took like the first 100 patients there and the social worker asked them to rate uh, pain, fatigue, anxiety on that one to 10 scale. And on average over that 100, they were like 5.6 in pain beforehand. It dropped about in half after the session. 
fatigue dropped significantly and anxiety dropped about 70% um, just after a session. And these are the same type of numbers that some of the uh, larger, more uh, rigorously done studies have indicated too, where they are um, having the you know PhDs in their uh, research projects do the same type of questions. And here's um, <clears throat> some of the feedback from one of the uh, clients, and down in the red talked about the benefits are many, uh, prevalent relief of pain and the freedom from anxiety. And you know what she really talks about also is how it helped her. Uh, you know, she had all these emotions at the top, anger, confusion, denial, and dread. And they end up uh, being able to uh, help soften those feelings so the freedom from anxiety and depression being able to look forward to the future a little bit more uh, here's another woman uh, Teresa she was uh, the biggest issue she was talking about was somehow it felt like her body betrayed her and when we helped get her back in connection with her body and she could find out that her body really could heal itself. Uh, because you can go through all the treatments, but whether it's the surgery or the chemo or the radiation, your body has to come up with the way to heal itself after those interventions. Those interventions can help by cutting out the, say, a tumor, by uh, shrinking a tumor with the radiation or the chemotherapy, but in the end, it's really your own body has to be able to heal from those. So those interventions uh, are going to be helpful, and the whole idea there is that it gives your body more time to and resources to heal. And so what this energy healing uh, seems to be helping people with is it pumps up the client's ability to self-heal afterwards. And it's always interesting too, sometimes we ask the clients uh, kind of that open-ended question. And here, uh, Tressa was like, well, my legs would feel better. They were less swollen, um, not just after the session, but for days afterwards. And we didn't even talk about that that was an issue for her because she wasn't really focused on that. So by helping relax the body in her particular case, it helped relax the blood vessels and the lymph system so that she could, uh, her, the swelling would go down. Some of the research that's been done uh, well, this was an interesting one. Um, so they took breast cancer survivors and they did um, <clears throat> fake healing sessions, real healing sessions, and then a control group. They gave them eight sessions over four weeks. The people that got the real sessions and the people that got the fake sessions couldn't really tell the difference on which one they got. And obviously the control group knew because they didn't get a session. And they were measuring the uh, cortisol within the, the client's saliva, I believe. And cortisol is generally in it, it's called a stress hormone. And generally uh, your cortisol will go up and down during the day, depending on the amount of stress you have. And the, if you have stress all the time, your cortisol level will stay high. So what they did in this group here is they measured that cortisol and what they found was 
um, that in the group that got the real healings, their cortisol variability uh, returned to almost normal. And the people that got the fake healings, even if they thought they were getting a real one, their cortisol stayed about where it was on showing a higher level of stress. And the control group's cortisol didn't have any change from before. So even though the patients, the clients thought they were getting a healing session, it, it didn't help. But the ones that got a healing session that didn't think that they were getting a healing session, they actually were helped. So this was a, a way to help show that their actual physiological um, process is going on that you get by having a healing session that weren't available for the people that, that didn't have healing sessions. And this is the type of research that is really helpful because it's showing that there really is a physiological response to what is going on. There's a, this session uh, here uh, I included because uh, these were people having uh, heart bicep, bypass surgery. And so they received a session the day before surgery, right before surgery and the day after. And what they found was the actual recovery time in these hospitals for bypass was about a seven day hospital stay. And they saw that the people that got the healing sessions on average left a day sooner. So this is showing that there's, uh, their bodies were able to heal faster from the, uh, the surgery by having the healing sessions than the people that uh, didn't have the healing sessions. And another one that was uh, done just a couple years ago, talking about uh, stress, there were some uh, active duty uh, Marines that were uh, coming back from deployment. And by having six sessions over three weeks, they were able to actually decrease the amount of their PTSD symptoms and de decrease the depression symptoms versus a control group. So again, this is kind of another stress level that we're showing there's a, a difference in the way people are able to uh, live their lives by having these type of sessions. Whereas energy healing practiced, there are uh, a large number of hospitals around the country that are using this on an inpatient basis as well as outpatient. Uh, Scripps hospitals out in uh, California are actually paying their nurses to take the uh, energy healing training so that they uh, are able to integrate that in with their regular everyday care. Uh, we're currently working uh, with uh, Sarah Cannon at Menorah. We have been for about 10 years now. Uh, they, we have a room at their uh, cancer center. We can work with uh, not only their patients there, but our patients. There's a pretty large program in uh, Denver called LifeSpark that has been, been active about the same amount of time that we have that have uh, some really good uh, partners in the community to uh, do referrals to. Uh, so we, when we think about, um, let me back here a bit. When we think about um, utilizing energy healing in cancer patients, uh, typically we'll have the, the, the client come in say the day before or after a chemotherapy. And so if they're on a three week type of schedule, they might uh, see them the day or after the, um, the chemo, one time in between, and then right around the uh, time of the chemo. 
So we might see them every week and a half during radiation. Typically, we're going to work with a client once a week. And uh, around surgery, we'll see them before the surgery and after the surgery. Uh, for a while, we were able to be in the uh, pre-op area down at Menorah and actually work with people you know, like within minutes of them going into the surgery. Unfortunately, we found that the schedule for the surgery was uh, more flexible that, you know, so we might show up, oh, we, they got taken in an hour before because somebody canceled. But so we ended up just working with people uh, like the day before, the day after, maybe we can go to their uh, hospital room after their discharge from the post-op. And that's really interesting because at that point they'll be hooked up to the blood pressure machines and their uh, uh, their pulse. And as you start working with someone, you can see those, um, the heart rate and the uh, blood pressure uh, normalize. At one woman, we she had a pretty fast uh, pulse and uh, we got it down to about normal and the nurse came in and had to check something and it shot back up and as soon as the nurse left and we started working again, we could see on the uh, instrumentation that her heart rate moved back to kind of where the normal should have been. So we were able to see people's um, physiological um, so, you know, condition shift. Okay, so next we'll show a uh, copy of uh, or a, a video of what the uh, energy healing session looks like, and you'll be able to ask questions during that point.